Okay, here we go. This is Marketing, Management, Money, the podcast, all things small business and side conversations, which is what we're going to do now. So um, we just had the 4th of July, which honestly is one of my absolute favorite holidays if, big fat if, you go back to what the 4th of July should represent. And that's oh, interesting. This is where my rant is going to start didn't off. Prime me on this one. I didn't. So. I did not prime you on this one. So, <laughs> so I'm curious to see. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay. Keep going. Keep okay. Going. So if you look at what it is, it is technically Independence Day, and you know, I asked my kids. I'm like, okay, so uh, what? What exactly is the Fourth of July? And they're just like, that's when we won the war against Great Britain. And I'm like, no, no, that was in, uh, I believe it was 1783 that we, uh, uh, you know, signed the treaty with them. And I don't, I don't say won the war because everyone's like, oh yeah, we won the war. And I'm like, if you look at the history. Uh, Great Britain kind of said, okay, fine, we're done fighting you guys. And they did sign a treaty with us, but it was because France came in. And, uh, you know, yes. and, and so I'm like, yeah, this fledgling little country didn't necessarily win a war against the greatest military power. They just were strategic enough to know how to get them to finally say, whatever, we're going to put our efforts down in India and other colonies that we have, you know. So anyway, no, uh, 4th of July is not when we won the war. Uh, and so the next thing that my kids said was, oh, it's when we declared war. And I'm like, <laughs> no, it is not when we declared war either. And you know what's funny about that? It's uh, probably wasn't your elementary age school kids. Uh, so middle, it was probably middle school and high school that you're still going, wow. Yeah. H history did not get taught right or didn't sink in or got skipped by too fast. I don't know. Well, so out here they have a constitution B similar to a spelling B, except for they just ask questions mm. about the United States constitutions. Okay. All of my children have participated in the Constitution B, and I believe they've all taken either first or second place in the Constitution B. And so according to this little, you know, test, they know their Constitution significantly better than their peers. This is in elementary school, right? Okay, okay. And I, I'm not trying to discredit my children, uh, but yeah, they... When I ask them, you know, what is, you know, what what are we celebrating on Independence Day? And they still don't know. And I'm just like, yeah, that's unfortunately is very common. Um, so Independence Day, do you know? Should I put you on the spot? Sure. Okay. What 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 are we celebrating when we celebrate Independence Day? That was the day that the founding fathers signed the Declaration of Independence, declaring that we wanted our independence from Great Britain. And they, and actually, if I remember correctly. They did it as a way to not um, uh, succeed from Britain as much as it was to say, hey, we want more independence. Uh, and maybe I'm confusing because there's a piece of our history where, where in the beginning they were saying, hey, look, we, we just want more freedom than what you're giving us. Um, which then I think led to some of the conflicts, which and then maybe led to the Declaration of Independence. Okay, so yeah, you are correct. I just want to clarify some of the dates. Um, yeah, I wouldn't get the dates right ever. Us declaring war in 1775 against Great Britain okay. was us saying, look, we just want more respect. No one wanted to have a separate country at that time. Yeah, that's correct. And so in 1775, the Revolutionary War technically was a form of a civil war because yeah. we were fighting our own nation. Because they didn't want the taxes. They, they're like, you're taking money. You don't even care about us. You're not bringing us reserves. You're not doing what you're saying you're going to do. So, And yet you want to come and take our taxes. Yes, by the time 1776 rolls around, so a year later, they were so fed up and they're like, look, Great Britain's not going to do anything. And so there was a group of political leaders yeah. who said, okay, we are declaring our independence from Great Britain. Okay, So the interesting thing is at the time, the majority of the population did not actually support 
separating from Great Britain. That's right. It was the minority that said, hey, we want this. But it was the influential minority. And, uh, and so that was, you know, that was kind of how that, uh, that whole independence thing started. So if you go with what are we celebrating, you could, you could say that there's two things that we're celebrating. One is we are celebrating the birth of our nation. The other thing that we are celebrating is a sense of freedom, and it is, you know, in the Declaration of Independence, this idea that human beings all have inalienable rights, which that's another interesting thing. Oh, inalienable yeah. from what? Inalienable from God, meaning you cannot separate man's rights from what God has given them. You know, uh, and so kind of, kind of an interesting thing when people start talking about the separation of church and state, and I'm like, oh, that is so misquoted and misunderstood <laughs> because at the time, people were very much they they were deists. They, oh, yeah. they, they were not Christians per se. There were some that were Christians. The majority of them were deists. They believed in God, yeah. not necessarily with okay. a well, because a lot of them actually, um, and you might correct a little bit, but I know there was a. a a lot of the population that was actually coming over here to get away from the Church of England. Yes. They they didn't like the oppression of the Church of England and that religion being forced on them when they didn't feel that it was uh, holistic enough, I mm-hmm. guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so when they said that separation of church and state, the uh, so if you look at the original colonies, it covered the east coast of the U.S., right. which is a very long stretch of land. Yeah. And there was a lot of diversity, a lot of diversity. You know, when you talk about the people getting away from the Church of England, there were also people that were just looking for economic opportunity. You know, it was fertile land. Yeah. You know, farming was good. Oh, yeah. uh, shipping was good. Especially trade was good. Southern states, the yeah. Carolinas. Man, you can grow anything there any time of year. It's yeah. amazing. And, and, and so what you had is you had... Uh, the founders that said, look, we're not going to impose a state religion. That's, you know, the Church of England was very much a state religion. So we're not going to impose a state religion. And that's the separation of church and state is saying that, you know, the government should not control religion. Um, and everyone's just like, oh, see, you know, like religion should stay out of everything. And I'm like, no, they actually put religion into, you know, all of the founding documents. I know. Every document talks about God and mm-hmm. deity and a higher power. Yeah. And so, so interesting thing, but I want to get back to, so you're, you're looking at two things. One is the, uh, the beginning of the United States of America. Um, the other is this idea that human beings have rights, that it's not the government, it is that the, the people um, and so when you start talking about independence and freedoms, it's actually looking at human rights. It's, it's a human rights issue. And, and so today, when you start talking about a lot of human rights situations, um, you know, there's a, a new movie that came out that we just watched. Oh, my gosh. Why is it slipping my mind? It's about the sex slavery. Um, Tim Ballard. What is the name of that movie? Sound of Freedom. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've heard about it, but is it good? Yeah, it's good. I actually preferred there is a uh, documentary that uh, came out before that is a lot more factual. It's not as entertaining, but the information in the documentary I think is so much better. There are some things in the in the movie that I'm like, I know you're trying to share a good message, but you're still making it, you know, edutainment where it's you're oh. educating and entertaining. Yeah, yeah. And and so personally, I think uh, I think just watching the documentary and getting more of the facts on what's happening is, is better. But hey. It's a message that needs to get out there, and you know, if people want to go see the movie, you know, go see the movie, learn from the movie. Uh, you know, I think that's important. So, anyway, you start talking about human rights, and I'm like, yeah, human rights issues have always been around, and well, and it's it's amazing how we try to make human rights so simplistic, but yet when you look at history, it tells you how complex it is. Yes, think about it. The founding fathers who were fighting for these human rights and equality and equity and things like that. Still, it took a hundred years to finally even get it kind of correct, if you know what I mean. More yeah. correct. Yes. And still even today, the argument is, is that we still don't have it perfectly 
Oh, I mean, we're so far from perfect. I do uh, think that there have been some significant improvements. Oh, I, I totally agree, but it, I mean, it's, uh, as I just make that argument all the time when people today want to say how simple it is. I'm like, look at history. It tells us that it's not a com- or a simple issue. It's very complex. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with people who, who change and behaviors and cultures and ethnicity and uh, interests. And all of that has a huge piece in defining who we are and how we behave. Yeah, yeah. It's so complex. Very complex and ongoing. You know, every generation yeah, has to every learn. generation, yeah. You know, I mean, we, we've mentioned this a couple of times on this show where, you know, we talk about like our grandparents' generation and the way that they look at, you know, like blacks. Right. And yeah. to them, it's a very cultural thing. And I'm like, yeah, if you want to change that, you have to change it from generation to generation. Um, you know, but it's not just with blacks. And that's what people, I think, lose sight of is they, well, they get hung up on one World issue. War II, World War II, the end of that. Think about the, the biases against uh, the Japanese people. Oh, yeah? Just, out of, just solely out of fear that, hey, are they here for the right reasons or are they a spy? Right? Yeah, yeah. Right? So, so thank heavens we dealt with it more appropriately than we had in the past. But still, it, it caused some issues. But even today... Uh, you you talk about uh, someone who has been violated by someone of another nationality, and th- it's hard for them to get past those biases. They pass them on to their kids mm-hmm. because you know I was mugged in a corner by you know X Y Z culture or race or ethnicity, and, yeah. and all of a sudden it's hard to change that. Yeah, it's it's such a complex issue, and and when we don't know something, we either. Uh, no, what what's the saying? We you kill it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You say it. <laughs> so if you are afraid of something or you don't understand it, there's two things you do: you kill it or eradicate it. Okay, yeah. um, or or you the best option is actually you have to actually study it to well, understand it. But, but, but generally, we don't do that. Y- you kill it or run from it. Yeah, those are the two common ones. Yeah. But what we should do is we should study it. We yeah. should, you know, get rid of the ignorance. That's right. And and learn from it. Yeah. You know? So, so jumping back to this whole Independence Day, July 4th, uh, I get really bent out of shape that people have turned the July 4th into almost a pro-military uh, type holiday. And I have a lot of respect for the military. You know, they're, they're great men and women in the military who are in the military for the right reasons. But I, uh, I'm not a fan of war. I think that the majority of war is wrong. And I think too many people use this uh, sense that they're defending themselves. Like everyone you know, is like, yeah, we're just defending ourselves. You look at like the war between Russia and Ukraine right now and both camps – want to say that they're in the right, you know, and so I'm like, yeah, most war is, is, is wrong, just flat out wrong. And and so to turn a holiday into a celebration of war, I'm like, no, 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 it needs to be, remember, you know, remember humans' rights and that all human beings, all human beings have rights that, and this is me preaching a little bit, they come from God. And, you know, regardless of what institution man puts on the earth, they still have those God-given rights, you know. So here's my rant. Like, that wasn't my rant, actually. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay, I, I know. I'm ready. Okay, I know. I'm ready. Like, that's like, not the rant, then it's going to get even better. <laughs> So I had a conversation with uh, with a guy once, and uh, he's about a decade younger than me, so it puts him in his thirties, right? Oh, that I'm, first thought was, I wonder if that was me, but now that you say younger, <laughs> I'm like, oh, so I'm safe. <laughs> and uh, we were talking about the U.S. Constitution. Now, if you look at the U.S. Constitution, that is an amazing document, and everyone goes to, you know, I mean, they they put blacks as three fifths of a human being, and everyone's like, "See how terrible the document is," and I'm like, "Okay, I would agree that that was a mistake. It was a political move at the time because they would not have gotten the Southern state states to ratify the Constitution had they not put something like that in there. So it was done for politics, and it's an error that has been." you know, fixed through the amendments. And so but it's, you know, it's amazing though, because if you study the history at that time, which this is what kind of blows me away, but 
you know, looking back is always 2020 vision, right? Mm -hmm, Right. But at that point in time, there was a large um, uh, number of the population that is they were bringing slaves into America because they were coming from, uh, you know, where they, they, you know, they were dressed immodestly, you know, they, they, they just, I mean, everything about it was that the population in general just said they're not, they're not human. They're not mm-hmm. fully human. Right. Which blows me away because when you, if you actually study their cultures and what it is, they were very complex. Mm-hmm. But because they didn't dress the same, the language wasn't the same. Okay. And we do this still today. I, you, we can say whatever you want, but when someone doesn't walk, talk, and act like a duck, yeah. right? They, they don't tell the line. Right. Then they're, they're not equal. Yeah. Okay. But that's what's, but they literally, when you read old documents and stuff, it's crazy how there was a common perception that they were not classified as human. Mm-hmm. It was a subspecies of human. And nowadays you just look at that and you shake your head, but uh, that's, you can't ignore the fact as ugly as it is. Right. And, and so, you know, I am not here saying that the Constitution is perfect and without fault. And it's easy to find the fault in it. But this is what I'm looking at. The majority of governments on the earth today have modeled their government after the United States Constitution. And you can say whatever you want, but like we went from a very monarchy driven world to a very democratic type world. And even countries that still have monarchs or dictators, they still have taken many elements of the U.S. Constitution and incorporated them into their government. So I'm like, very powerful document. So I'm talking to this guy, and he's like, oh, yeah, the Constitution, it's antiquated. It's, you know, 250 years old. Yeah. Uh, you know, civilizations crash within 250 years. So, you know, fall of Rome. Therefore, we need to get rid of the Constitution. <laughs> And I'm, I'm summing up very you, you understand quickly. why Rome fell, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I love, you know, I have a little bit of Italian background, so I love studying about Rome, the, the start of the Caesars, um, you know, Julius Caesar, all of that. I love studying about it because there's so much to be learned. A powerhouse, think about it. Rome was the powerhouse. Right. It, it I mean, other cultures have been powerhouses, but at that time, when we have at least some significant written history and documentation that you can actually study with a certain level of credibility, Rome was the powerhouse. Yes. Okay. Uh, Greece is still kind of in there. You know, they, there's some things in there, but not not as a powerhouse. You know, they had they had conquered many countries, et cetera, et cetera. But when you look at what caused Rome to fall, it's some of the same things that people are pushing today. And I'm just like... Why don't you study other cultures? Why don't you study other history? Mm-hmm. Because as as soon as you have a document that um, you're attacking that say you know you say it's antiquated, things have changed because our lifestyle or because technology, technology. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's the problem. That when something is founded on good, the good should always override. Uh, regardless of what it is. But that's what people are trying to make is technology says that, you know, the document's not good anymore. No, no, no. The base principles behind it are good. Yeah. Right? Well, it's like saying the Bible is antiquated. <laughs> right? Okay. Like the Bible was written antiquated on purpose. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. There are so many good, regardless of your religion and your beliefs, you can't make the argument that many, if not 80% of the teachings and the principles in in a Christian Bible are good principles that if everyone were to follow we would ble- we'd be in a better situation in this world, right? Yeah, which and the crazy thing is is so many people want to bring it down there's like, "Oh, well, you know, you're you're looking at the Bible and Christianity and it's so narrow-minded." I'm like, "Okay, let's look at the principles of Buddhism." Great principles, principles. in right. Buddhism. I mean, the founding of Buddhism is goes back to this thing of human, human rights. rights. You know, <laughs> like Buddha ended up seeing all of the suffering and realized, wait a second, this isn't right. This isn't fair. 
you know, and, and so, you know, there's, there's a lot. And, and, and I apologize, like, I don't know off the top of my head, you know, like, I can't go back to the founding of Confucianism, like, I don't actually understand it very well. I just know, like, random sayings from it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> which may not even be accurate. But if you look at the, the, the founding of, uh, you know, like Islam, I, uh, I actually did some time studying uh, the founding of Islam and understanding, you know, Islamic principles. And I'm like, wow, they're, they're good and they're right. And it's like... And, and interesting enough, because of the radicals, we think it's an aggressive religion. I mean, aggressive towards other things type of religion. Um, but it teaches a lot of peace and kindness yes. that, but they have this one word that's called an infidel <laughs> that, that if you get stuck on that causes why there's so much hatred from some of their radical mm-hmm. you know, Islamists that why they're attacking other people, which the but, vast majority of them are not that way. I mean, okay. Look at science. Everyone's like, oh, you know, we need to get religion out of, you know, schools and we need to stop looking at, you know, all this religion. And I'm like, okay, the Nazi regime was based on science and they were radical. I think we need to get the radicalism out. You know, science is great. Islam is great. Christianity is great. All of these things have really good principles. But when you take anything to an extreme. That's right then you and, are going to run into problems. You know, and it's interesting we want to talk about extremes in um, politics and religion and things like that, but uh, I'm, I always say, well, take a step back and let's talk about extremes in your personal life, right? Oh, now you're getting good. <laughs> because, because that's the same thing that happens. When we go extreme on diets, if we go extreme on exercise, if we go extreme on... Business. business we're a business podcast here and right. you know if you go extreme on hey you know i'm only gonna go fishing the whole rest of my life and become a fishing fanatic it causes problems so so you have to really understand that uh extremes no matter where they're at um can cause problems if they're not managed yeah yeah no i think i think that is that is excellent to look at i uh, so there was, uh, in our community, uh, there was a police announcement that went out that they uh, had a suspect that was considered armed and dangerous. Now, we live in a quiet community, so this was a big deal to have you know this police announcement that went out. And I was grateful to law enforcement. They were on top of it. Like, they yeah. responded quickly. They responded appropriately. There was a guy down the street who he got his gun out, and I'm like, don't. <laughs> Don't like, you know, everyone who complains about guns, it's because of crap like this, you know, law enforcement is managing it. I get, if someone breaks into your house, get your gun out. You know, I'm a hundred percent in fan of, you know, people being able to own guns. If someone breaks into your house, get your gun out. Like, you know, that, that's fine. If you want to protect yourself, you want to protect your family. I think that is your right to protect yourself, but don't try and, you know, deputize whoever to, yeah. to, to or yourself. Yeah. You know, like that, that's where, and, and talking about the extreme is I'm like, it's, it's not, you know, 99% of the people really want to be good people. Well, uh, 99 is a little bit too generous. <laughs> <laughs> there the are a lot of greedy, selfish people out there. The majority of people are good people. The majority of people are good people, you know. And so, but okay, I want to jump all the way back. I still actually haven't gotten to my rant. Wow, <laughs> double wow! I, I, I know we 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 okay. have gone like this is the taboo episode because we're talking about politics, religion, guns, <laughs> racism. I mean, <laughs> is there any other topic that we need to just throw in there to make sure that we've offended everybody? Well, you haven't even got to your rant, so let's see. <laughs> my rant won't offend anyone. <laughs> That's the funny thing is, uh, so okay this this is my rant. This guy that I was talking to that said that the U.S. Constitution is antiquated, I asked him a very simple question. Have you read it? Oh, you know his answer was no. I know. That's why I asked the question. You know it was no. And, you know, when he's like, well, I mean, I I, I haven't. I'm like, okay, do me a favor. Read it before you ever open your mouth again. It's like bad-mouthing a book or a movie you haven't even seen. I, I know. 
And but here's the other frustrating thing. Okay, so this is I'm on my rant now. Okay, <laughs> just to be clear. So July Fourth celebrates our independence with what document? The Declaration of Independence. Anyone who tells me that that is not our founding document has no idea what our country was founded on. That is our founding document. You cannot understand the Constitution of the United States without first reading the Declaration of Independence. And all of the usurpations, everyone reads the first page or the first two pages. The first two pages. Yeah. First two sentences. Yeah, because that's all catchy and cliche, and they don't read all of the usurpations of power that were list. It's long. Mm -hmm. It's a rant. You know, <laughs> like you, you want a long rant. So there's this long rant of everything that King George had done against the colonies that they were saying, this is why. This is what we're doing, right? And so if you understand all the usurpations of power and if you understand that the Declaration of Independence lays the foundation of the government because that was the founding document, then they went and they tried the Articles of Confederation, didn't work, it was too weak of a government, and then they went and did the Constitution. It was their second attempt at, at government. The, con the Declaration stood the test of time. It still held as the founding document. And so I get so bent out of shape when all these people start talking about how we need to change things. And I'm like, you don't even know what we have in place. So why are you changing things? Why do you want to tear something down that you haven't well, even taken a chance to read? Not well, let alone study, well, but read. Well, what's, what's super interesting about it as well, too, when they say change, you're like, tell me how many amendments there are. Yeah. Because that's what those were intended to do, yeah. to, to fine-tune the documents. What, what's the definition of amend? Right. <laughs> to change. And so you, to, when you talk about changing it, we have a process in place and everything, but it, it's interesting enough that other people who have tried it, it just gets shot down every time because the they want to try to do an amendment, but what they're really trying to say is we want to get rid of the Constitution. Yeah. But then you say, okay, then what are you going to replace it with? Right. What document are you going to replace it with that is actually better, that keeps the the intent of the document, okay, mm -hmm. holistic? And, and if you go back to the intent, the intent of the Declaration of Independence is human rights. And so all these people that are saying it's antiquated because we don't have human rights or we don't understand human rights, I'm like, that was actually the foundation. All of the usurpations and, of power and were against human rights. A few humans and some uh, very prominent leaders kind of screwed it up a little bit, which now is the reason why people want to attack it. Yeah. yeah. It, it's human error, not, uh, I make an argument, not document error as much as it is, is human error. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That was my rant, actually, huh. and uh, I, I, I guess you know you it's know, that's a great takeaway because I, it's been years since I've actually read the the Declaration of Independence as a whole document. To but at least you've read it. Yeah, but it's it's enough that as we've been talking, I'm like, yeah, I've forgotten some of this stuff. As we talk, I start to remember it. Yeah, but this is a good reminder, especially this time of year, you know, mm -hmm. to hey, refresh your memory a little bit. Yeah, read up on it. Yeah, and oh, I mean, there's some great short books about the, about the you know founding fathers and uh, and matter of fact, all kinds of books out there actually on the founding fathers and the, what they were going through and and even on the flip side of it, when you get into the Benedict Arnolds and their perspective on all this stuff that that you know just occasionally you know instead of reading your fiction you know go read a nonfiction book on some of that. It's it well, just isn't. It's super amazing. And, and going back to, I mean, your comment on the fall of Rome, you know, like study some history. If, if yeah. Before you want to make change, look at what's already. There's a lot of manuals out there. And when I say manuals, that's like air quotes of, you know, like people have already tried things and, you know, well, learn from their mistakes instead of it, making their and, mistakes. And what's crazy when you look at. Uh, one key factor that is in almost the fall of every civilization is that it, they kind of start a little bit more as a, uh, I, I'm not going to get this wrong. You might have to correct me. And I don't know if the right word is republic or democracy. I want to say maybe a republic. 
So a, a I, republic I can... would be a representative democracy. That's the the pure definition okay. if you go back to – I mean, they've been changed a lot because everyone kind of has their own version. But, yeah, but democracy I'm... is just strictly by the people. A republic is a representation of the people. Okay, so let me use uh, – yeah, I'm going to use both words because it might apply. But when you look at civilizations over the years, a lot of them have started that way. But eventually it becomes a dictatorship. Yeah. And that's the more it becomes that, the less representation from the people, mm-hmm. the more dictatorship goes down that route, the, the sooner that the, the implosion mm-hmm. of that country happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's fascinating. So if you managed to stick through this entire episode and we didn't offend you, even if we did offend you and you stuck through I, this entire episode. I don't think we offended anybody. I mean, my intent was not to offend, offend, you know, like I have some strong opinions and so, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw out one more rant. Okay. Now this one might offend people the way you're saying this. No, no. <laughs> it, it's just, if you want me to be tolerant of you, you need to be tolerant of me. I, that I agree with. And that's a huge issue because if you can't see and understand, at least listen to both sides of the perspective, and at the end with a gentleman's agreement, say, "All right, you know, we're not quite aligned, but I do have a greater respect." Yeah, like at least I'm not going to attack or run or you know kill you. You know what I mean? Y- you know, I mean, my moral foundation is based on Christianity. If that offends you, then you need to have some tolerance because so if your moral foundation is based on you know like a utilitarian scientific approach great you have a moral foundation we can still have you know a discussion the vast majority we're going to agree upon we're going to agree that you know i can't murder you and you can't murder me i shouldn't steal from you and you shouldn't steal from me right you know if i want to say that my commandments came from god and you want to say that you know this is what's best for the whole of society okay you know, we can still tolerate each other. We can have that discussion. And we can be very a, open about it. And have a high level of respect. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, that's my intent was not to offend anyone in this, even though I spoke, you know, very openly about, hey, this is what I believe. And I hope that you would share what you believe. So, you know, if you if you want to read me in the comments, uh, you know, <laughs> Ryan at marketingmastermoney.com. <laughs> No, honestly, I hope you guys enjoy this time of year. Uh, celebrate your independence, but celebrate the human rights that, you know, like we as human beings need to respect each other. Educate yourself a little bit on what that has meant throughout history because the stuff that we're looking at today, yeah, it's it's a, a repeat of history. It's got a little bit of a variation to it, but it's a repeat of history. And so, you know, peace, respect, love. Can I say all that? Yeah. Okay. Why not? Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll catch you guys next time. See ya.